Hey guys, welcome back to another conversion video. I know it's getting a little bit boring for the guys that are returning, but for someone that's looking to convert this model, it will definitely be useful. So behind me, I've got this, what will be once it gets fully wrapped, beautiful JZX110, which is similar chassis to the JZS171, which is the Toyota Crown I converted previously. Now I'm gonna make this video only one part. So I'm gonna point out the differences between the uh, JZS171 and the JZX110. Uh, and obviously, if you guys not sure about something, refer to the previous videos of the Toyota Crown because these cars are actually quite similar. So first up, let's take out the seat. Let's uh, get rid of the handbrake, foot brake, e-brake, parking brake, whatever you're from, whatever you want to call it. So let's do it. Okay, so this car has got a bright seat, which is quite an advantage, being a lot smaller seat, we've got plenty of room for the handbrake. So I uh, need to figure out how to rip this center console out because it looks a little bit different. Let's first up, get rid of the seat. Oh, it should that easy. Now the center console. Now having a look at the pedal, I think we are in luck and the setup is slightly different to the uh, JZS Crown. And as far as I'm aware, this is probably quite similar to the JZX 100. And everything is ready to rock and roll for a clutch pedal simply because these cars actually did come as a manual. Plan of action, get rid of the parking brake, then modify the brake pedal, just cut into shape to make it into a manual. Then put the car on the ramp, get rid of the automatic gearbox, the gear selector, and then we're gonna modify the IS200 gearbox to uh, the JZ engine. Let's do it. So two 12 mils. All right, we've ran a bit of wire. So I'm using this earth at some point. And I'm sure there probably is another bolt from underneath the dashboard. And then, I can't believe it, we just take the pedal out and put a pedal in. Nice and easy, good stuff. If you can make it out, there's one there. There's one on the other side as well. So there's two 12 mil bolts. Let's take it out. There's also a uh, switch on there. So we've got to be careful with that. Okay, there's this duct in here and the cable goes underneath so the best thing is probably to try and disconnect the cable. Don't judge me but no one's going to use this cable so why not make my life easier. And that's it, now we're going to put the uh, cable here, we can fully disconnect it when we're under the car and this should give us all the room to install the pedal. Let's find the pedal. So as you can see, we've got plenty of room. This car had a J-pipe delete, probably in Japan, I would have thought. And nice stock holes for the uh, master cylinder for the clutch. So this is IS-200 one. Shove that in there. Beautiful. Now let's get onto the pedal. So kind of hard to show you. I'm sure you can see my ice crack instead. Okay, well, this is fun. Okay, let's do up those nuts and we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna do these nuts. And I'm gonna hope that the uh, one of the top holes we've got left over from the foot brake is gonna line up as well. And it does, awesome. So on the JZS 171, the Toyota Crown, the top bolt doesn't line up with the pedal, but on this JZX 110, it does. I just need to find the right lamp bolt. Let me just show you. It's really always hard to show you when working on pedals, but as you can see right at the top, you've got two holes left over from the foot brake and the left one actually lines up with the pedal. So that's awesome. So let's find the right, the right size bolt. Okay, so the pedal's fully in. We've got two bolts on the master, one bolt right at the top. Now I will have to modify this pedal and cut it to shape just like I did on the crown because the pedal is completely different to the IS200. So that's something I covered. So you just have to take my word for it. Magic. I'm ready to rip out the automatic gearbox, fairly self-explanatory. Really quite a nice car underneath. It does have all the oil leaks. I mean, the JZs do tend to leak quite a bit, but this one seems to have all of them, to be honest. Uh, so it's quite oily there. I'm gonna get a little bit messy, so thanks for that, Luke. Joking. Uh, so yeah, let's get the gearbox out.
Okay, so it's next day for me. For you, obviously, a few seconds later, I got the gearbox out. Now I'm gonna convert the J160 uh, to a JZ engine. It's something I've done before uh, quite in detail. So somewhere in the corner here, there's a link. You can check it out. All I'm gonna do today, obviously, apart from the click and it's all magically done, we're gonna look at the different kits that I normally use. I normally use the MCL Auto Works. Uh, this customer has supplied his own parts and he's got a Lexi brake kit. So we're gonna have a look at the main differences. Okay, so let's have a look at the Lexi brake kit, perhaps try and do a little scoring system, compare it to the MCL kit I normally use. Try and help me count. I'm gonna try and do it in post edit as well. So first look, the plate is actually quite nice. It's CNC machined, so it looks a bit more professional. I'm not sure how the MCL is cut, but it looks a bit more DIY. So that's points for the Lexi brake. As far as I'm aware, the Lexi brake seems to be in stock all the time. So that's points for Lexi brake with the MCL. Sometimes it's a bit of a trouble to get it. It's available from Northern Ireland and from from Crest Motorsport in the UK. Uh, but sometimes they don't have in stock, you know, waiting for a new batch to come in from, obviously from the welders and stuff. So that's points for Lexi brake. Now, another difference uh, is the MCL is welded from both sides, uh, from the inside as well as the outside. So to me, that's points for the MCL. Also, the MCL is cheaper. So I think we are drawing to all. Uh, another little difference would probably be the starter motor situation. With this kit, as far as I'm aware, you can use this on a 1JZ, one one GZ starter and a two GZ starter are a little bit different. So with the MCL, you can't use the one GZ starter because it's got a little cage going through. But as far as my older car, I've been working on that. I had this kit before. The one GZ starter was still present. So that's points for Lexi brake. Now the disadvantages of the Lexi brake would be, uh, for this might be at two points for MCL, is it uses a small bearing because it is a knockoff of the MCL, the first version. So the reason why I'm giving MCL point because I don't like knockoffs, especially at small businesses. So yeah, and that leaves us with the bearing because this is the first design of the bearing, which is from 8086. It's quite small. It hasn't got any cutouts for the fork so it can spin and it's obviously smaller and sometimes causes an issue with some of the uh, clutch kit. It makes a bit of a noise. So that's another point for MCL. And I think that leaves us with wind for the MCL. Now let's do the old snap thing. Boom. Next up, gonna sort out underneath here, and that is to replace the flex plate with a clutch. Before I put the gearbox in, which is all ready now, is to bypass the neutral switch. Now, this is the neutral switch plug on the old uh, Toyotas. They all look pretty much the same. And the neutral switch is generally the spade connectors, or the connectors that are larger. So you've got this one and that one. They're larger than the rest of them. And that's the ones we need to connect to bypass the neutral switch. Next up is the actual gearbox. It can sometimes be a bit of a pain. You kind of have to have it in a 45 degree and a 45 degree because of the bell housing adapter it's quite big so uh, let's do it time lapse it Okay, so the gearbox is in, so is the starter motor, but ignore what I said at the beginning of the video. I was under the impression that with this kit, you can use the 1GZ starter motor. I swear that's what I saw on my friend Chris's Verosa. I think he still runs the 1GZ. Uh, but with this kit, it looks like you have to use the uh, 2GZ starter as well. So we've got one of them in there. So it's clear enough for MCL Auto Works. Don't use the Lexi brake, not worth the extra money. Now let's put in the uh, put on the prop shaft, fill it up with oil, and that means we are done underneath so the only thing left underneath is to fill it up with all and our customer bought his own parts as i said and he bought this redline mt90 uh, very good oil as far as i'm aware this is probably one of the best stuff you can put in these boxes it's just under one liter you know nine four six milliliters so a little bit under but two bottles will do fine now supposedly the best combo you can do is to put a liter of this mt90 in there and one liter of this lightweight shockproof apparently a good combo but customer support applied two liters of this so that's what we're gonna put in okay i've never used this oil but it looks a little bit like atf the automatic transmission fluid slightly red it seems to be going in easier than normal 75 or 80 90. that's it <coughs> One more in there. If you guys work on cars, get yourself one of these syringes. Absolute lifesaver. Because what you can do, you can actually close it here and you can open it here as well. So you don't have to suck out a bottle. You can just save the lid of it, pop it in there, close it and off you go. It's made by Powerhand. Never heard of it, but it's definitely good stuff. 
Okay, so that's two bottles, which is enough. Okay, so I think we are done underneath. Let's uh, continue the top. No, I like, we are not done. We need to bleed the clutch. Okay, nice little trick how to bleed a clutch by yourself if you got this off external slave is to uh, open up the bleed nipple, press the arm. There we go, it's already coming out. I let it draw some of the fluid, open up and let it draw some of the fluid, open up, get rid of the bubbles, close it and let it draw the fluid. Easy as that, job done. Next up is the handbrake situation. Our customer bought IS200 handbrake, which is something I can't use for this application because it sits on the other side uh, by the passenger. Now, obviously I should have checked this past this more carefully and sort of say, look dude, you need a JZX100 or 110 one or even a Toyota Supra. But this is what I've got to work with. So normally it sits on the top of the tunnel. So I'm going to cut this bracket, weld it here. So it sort of follows it horizontally. And then this sort of comes out because it sits on the other side. So I'm going to weld a little spacer there so let's do it time lapse it okay so i've got the handbrake all attached with its cable so it's not tight or anything yet and i'm gonna put the handbrake into a position which i think is going to work and we're gonna mark where we need to drill okay let's do it Maybe we'll get a sharper drill bit instead. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting some reef nuts there so we can put a bolt through. So I've got this uh, stepper drill bit. I'll call it the Christmas tree guy. I'll do. Love using the reef nut gun since I got it. Once you got reef nuts, you never go back. Awesome, we retained the adjustment as well, unlike the other conversion I did. So, uh, awesome, I like it. Okay, so cut the console nice and neat, handbrake works fully. Then I prefer the uh, later gearbox of the IS200 because, well, the, uh, the shifter tripod is a little bit different. With this aluminium one, it is a massive hole we need to now uh, fix up, otherwise it's not gonna work. So uh, gonna do some aluminium work there so we can bolt the uh, boot up because obviously it's just a lot smaller. It's good enough solution. So if you guys convert in one of these, try and get yourself the gearbox with the steel bracket. Nearly done, all that's left now is to wire in the emulator now for the JZX 110. There's actually quite a nice diagram available from Phoenix Management in the UK. That's the guys I get the emulators from. So that's obviously a lot easier than the Toyota Crown I was doing previously. So let wire it in. Okay, so I'm all done converting the JZX 110. I've got the owner of the car, Luke, to take it out for a test drive with me. He absolutely loves it. It's just a completely different car. So that's us done for today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.